Hello and thanks for joining us for our late night newscast coming to you from Ali Lang's news centre in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story tonight, it appears that North Korea has test-fired a submarine-launched ballistic missiles from waters off its eastern coast. Our Defence Ministry correspondent Kim Hyun-bin starts us off. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff says the projectile, presumed to be a submarine-launched ballistic missile, was fired from near Shimpo, Hamgyeongnam-do province, on Saturday evening at 6.30 p.m. South Korea time. The South Korean military is currently assessing whether the launch was a success. The projectile was fired from a 2,000-ton submarine, and South Korean military officials believe the missile's rocket booster did ignite, but it was only in the air for a short time. The Joint Chiefs of Staff in Seoul say they are keeping a close eye on North Korea's movements and maintaining a high state of readiness. North Korea conducted a failed SOBM launch in November of last year, and another possibly successful launch around six months before that. Experts have noted that SOBMs need to be tested numerous times in order to refine the launches, especially given the complexity of the technology involved. This latest launch comes amid mounting speculation. North Korea could conduct a fifth nuclear test ahead of a rare party congress early next month. Kim Bin, Arya News. Now, we're just hearing that the launch has been deemed unsuccessful. This is according to information just in from the South Korean military. Officials say the missile uh, only flew about 30 kilometers before splashing into the sea. Now, these kind of missiles, SLBMs, if that is what it actually was, need to fly at least 300 kilometers to be considered a success. Now, South Korea and China have reaffirmed that they are on the same page on getting North Korea to abandon its nuclear weapons and return to talks. The meeting in Beijing comes as satellite imagery suggests Pyongyang could be about to conduct a fifth nuclear test. Shin Se-min reports. The top nuclear envoys of South Korea and China have warned of additional grave measures against North Korea if the regime launches additional provocations like a fifth nuclear test. The remarks were made by Seoul's special representative for Korean Peninsula Peace and Security Affairs, Kim Hong-gyun, and his Chinese counterpart, Wu Dawei, after their bilateral meeting in Beijing. Agreeing to maintain close contact, the two officials also affirm that they take a stern stance against any actions that violate UN Security Council resolutions. Pyongyang is under tough international sanctions following its fourth nuclear test in January and a long-range missile launch the following month. Recent satellite images appear to show that North Korea is ready to conduct another nuclear test at any time at its Pungeri nuclear test site. Experts believe the regime wants to conduct the test ahead of its key party congress in early May. Following the meeting, China's foreign ministry said Beijing will stay in close communication with Seoul and make extra efforts to restart the long-stalled six-party talks. Seoul's representative emphasized that the delegates of South Korea, the U.S. and China have been coordinating separately for two straight days. He met with Sung Kim, U.S. Special Representative for North Korea, the day before meeting Wu in Beijing. The Chinese envoy also met with Sung Kim the previous day, where the two agreed to remain united on the firm opposition to North Korea's provocative and irresponsible behavior. And although China has yet to accept Seoul's request to hold three-way discussions, the South Korean officials said the consecutive rounds of talks were a sign of progress. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Now, North Korea's foreign minister had a brief but friendly encounter with UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon at UN headquarters on Friday local time as he attended a signing ceremony for the Paris Climate Agreement. After signing the deal at the podium of the UN General Assembly Hall, Lee Soo-yong shook hands with Ban warmly and they talked to each other for a few seconds before posing uh, for a few pictures. Uh, giving a short speech prior to the signing, the North Korean minister criticized the United States. He argued that stability must be guaranteed in order to address the world's environmental problems. But uh, what he called U.S. nuclear war exercises were destabilizing the situation. Rhee is not expected to meet formally with Ban or U.S. Secretary of State uh, John Kerry, the North Korean minister, is due to leave New York this weekend. Japan's justice minister is the latest high-profile member of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's cabinet to visit the controversial Yasukuni war shrine. Mitsuhide Iwaki 
visited the shrine in person on Saturday, the final day of Japan's Spring Festival. The shrine honors Japan's war dead, including 14 Class A war criminals. Iwaki's visit comes a day after another minister and scores of Japanese lawmakers paid their respects at the Yasukuni shrine. Prime Minister Abe sent a ritual offering on Thursday. Korea and China, both victims of Japan's past actions, have condemned the visits, saying it beautifies the country's colonial past and war of aggression. The floor leaders of Korea's three main political parties will meet at the National Assembly on Sunday to discuss pending issues as the 19th Parliament is drawing to a close. Ahead of a meeting of their deputy floor leaders on uh, Wednesday, the ruling Senuri Party's Won Yu Chol, the main opposition Minju Party of Korea's Lee Jong Gol, and the minor opposition People's Party Ju Sung Yong will fine tune the details of the uh, economy and livelihood related bills that would be put to a full floor vote in May. The representatives of each negotiating bloc will also discuss ways to tighten national security and carry out corporate restructuring plans. Korea's construction firms are expected to seal a number of bumper deals with Iran when President Park and Hay takes a business delegation with her during a trip to that country next month. President Park travels to Tehran on March, uh, May 1st rather, for a three-day trip where she will discuss ways to boost bilateral ties following the lifting of international sanctions on the country. During the president's visit, the business delegation is expected to put pen to paper on agreements worth between 13 to 17 billion U.S. dollars to build rail, petrochemical and medical infrastructure in the Middle Eastern country. Hyundai Engineering and Derim Industrial are forecast to sign the most lucrative deals with the oil-rich country. Now, the scandal surrounding Japanese automaker Mitsubishi Motors appears to be deepening. It turns out that the car giant may have been using a fuel efficiency testing method that doesn't comply with Japanese regulations on 27 models or more than 2 million vehicles. The Sankey Shimbun newspaper reports that the automaker is suspected of using non-Japanese test methodology on models including the RVR, Outlander and Pajero. There are fears that this scandal could trigger ballooning compensation costs and fines for the company. Japan's sixth largest automaker was forced to admit this week that it had overstated the fuel efficiency of more than 600,000 cars. It wiped 40, 40 percent of the company's market value or more than three billion US dollars in just three days. Now, April 23rd, today is World Book Day, a celebration of authors, publishers and most importantly books and reading. But in Korea, it's not all festive, really, as research shows four out of ten people don't even read a single book a year. E. G. Won tells us more. I don't read books that much. I read about one or two books a year. I try to read three to four books a year. According to a research by the Culture Ministry on more than 3,000 Korean adults, the number of people reading at least one book a year has been continuously falling. In 2015, the number hit the lowest point since related records began more than 20 years ago. The biggest reason people give for not reading is a lack of free time. Respondents also said they were not fond of reading or not that interested in books. And the list continues with other reasons that show reading is not a top priority. In fact, the average time people spend reading during weekdays has been steadily decreasing. It stood at around 23 minutes in 2015, about 10 minutes less than five years ago. Some experts say this is the result of long-term problem. Since students in Korea are always too busy with schoolwork, they grow up without much time or inclination to read for enjoyment. People are not used to reading, and that's why it is not a priority in their lives. We need to create a reading culture for people to make it a hobby for them. Creating book-friendly environments for people is a solution. Book Cafe and Book Stay are some of them where people can easily approach and enjoy reading. And the government is also seeking various ways to promote reading by organizing events like Book Dream Day, where books can be bought, sold, and traded. It also offers readers the chance to meet authors and gain insight into their works. At this event in Central's Hall, numerous publishers and authors set up booths to encourage people to read. Various activities were also prepared to capture people's attention. 
And on Saturday, Prime Minister Hwang Kyo-an paid a visit to highlight the importance of reading. He said the government plans to expand the number of public libraries across the nation and promote reading programs. Lee ji Arirang News. Now, red ginseng is universally recognized for its numerous health benefits, and a new study suggests it may also be effective in containing HIV and herpes. Kim mok reports. Red ginseng, also known as Hongsam in Korea, has been widely acknowledged for its effectiveness in fighting viral infections. According to a research team at the University of Ulsan's Asan Medical Center, a local patient infected with HIV since 1987 has survived for 30 years just by the help of red ginseng. The patient has ingested a dozen red ginseng capsules containing 500 milligrams of the root every day. This latest research has drawn attention since the average duration of life among HIV-infected patients is 11 years. I think the best treatment for HIV is jointly taking red ginseng and HIV medication. It will help boost the immune system and improve a slow metabolism. Red ginseng is also found to be helpful for patients infected with the herpes virus. Local researchers observed that the number of antiviral agents doubled when a mouse that tested positive for the virus was injected with red ginseng extract. Experts predict that given the protective effects red ginseng has against viral diseases, it could also possibly be effective in preventing Zika or even MERS. Kim mok Arirang News. Now, before we go, let's take a brief look at the weather. And the air quality continues to be extremely bad across most of the entire country with very high levels of uh, fine dust. So if you do have to head out tonight... Uh, uh, wear a face mask if possible. Now, temperature-wise, it will also be quite a brisk night. Uh, the low is going to drop to 6 degrees Celsius in Seoul. Sunday will be warm with a high of 23 degrees Celsius in the Korean capital. Uh, we will be under clear skies, though, but uh, unfortunately the fine dust might still linger throughout the day. With that, let's take a look at the weather around the world. Well, those are the stories we have for you at this hour. Have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye.